guys, okay, we are back again with another video from A Level Lessons Online. Right, I'm going to be covering and the entire economic series um, for this entire uh, syllabus of A Levels. Okay, uh, economics in 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 particular over here. We're going to be looking at microeconomics first. Okay, followed by macroeconomics at a later stage. Um, as the videos go down. Okay, if not, I may upload them um simultaneously. All right, I'm going to be first covering with the entire bit of microeconomics so from scarcity all the way to market structure followed by market failure all right in um this lecture part series all right so it's going to be quite a long uh a, a few set of videos okay but i'm very very sure that it's going to be quite helpful for you so if you do enjoy it okay be sure to hit that like button here as well as to subscribe okay it does help out the channel a lot all right so without further ado let's jump right into the entire series starting off with the first part on scarcity all right you first need to understand that when we're looking at economics, okay, be it micro or macroeconomics, there's going to be this one issue which constantly pops up, okay, and that is the issue of scarcity. Okay, you have heard your teacher talk about this before. You have heard the word scarcity in several different places before, right? Scarcity is essentially what it basically is, okay? It is a problem in the world of economics, whereby there is basically limited resources and unlimited ones, all right? So... Okay, this one I don't have my highlighter, so I won't highlight. Okay, you just need to take note over here. Okay, so basically the problem of scarcity is whereby there are limited resources and unlimited ones. Okay, such resources include land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. All right, whereby society constantly wants more and more. Okay, so the issue of scarcity is when we have got very, very limited resources, okay, with barely anything to use, yet we constantly want more and more. So be it more goods or more services for ourselves. Okay, so with the current level of resources, there's, it is currently insufficient to match up to this. As a result, this gives rise to this thing called an opportunity cost. Okay, I'll go through what the definition of opportunity cost is later on. But for this part, I just want you to really understand that this problem of scarcity has been going on for ages, okay, since uh, time began, okay, since the whole economics world began, right? People realized that, okay, yeah, um, while we want a lot of these, a lot of different goods to be produced, okay, there's always this issue of scarcity which somehow never ever ceases to exist, okay? It is always there, too little resources, too many people, uh, too many ones, okay, that we need, that we want. So what is opportunity cost? Okay, opportunity cost is defined as the next best alternative. Okay, as a result of um, scarcity, okay, there are more people who are left with only the next best alternative. Okay, so essentially what it basically means is that when there's a case of scarcity, let's say I put you and someone else in a room, right, and I give you guys only one, um, let's say one apple to eat, all right, and then um, let's say if you can't get the apple, the only next best option is to eat the, let's say, um, eat a grape okay that is in, in the room All right so basically what happens is that an opportunity cost is let's say if the other person chooses to go ahead and run for the apple and take it first you are only left with the next best alternative okay let's say if you were you know busy using a phone you weren't paying attention okay as that that uh, that action of using a phone okay and not paying attention it could cost you this thing called an opportunity cost and by now you have to settle for the next best alternative which is basically to settle for that grape so an example over here that I gave case that a consumer has $10 to eat a meal, watch a movie or buy a toy. If the movie is his first choice, the meal is second, and the toy is his third choice, the opportunity cost of seeing the movie will be both that, that chance to go and um, eat, eat that meal, as well as to go and buy the toy that he has to forego. Okay, so he can only choose one why? Because time is also a scarce resource, right? He doesn't have, um, he can't be at all three places at once doing all three different things. He can only choose one. Hence, the other two options would be the, the other alternatives that are available. So next, we go on to the production possibility curve, otherwise known as the PPC. Okay, the PPC basically shows the maximum amount of two goods, okay, which the economy can produce with a given quantity and quality of resources okay this is assuming a particular state of technology so you're basically what it's saying is that it is assuming that technology is constant there's no change or uh, in technology there is no improvement there is no um slowing down of technology okay and so basically what happens is that this ppc shows you the 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 scale okay at which goods can be produced in an economy where resources are scarce Okay, so it does focus on two... I'll go, I'll go through the graph in a bit. Okay, but it does focus on two assumptions. Firstly, is that resources are available and fixed in both quantity and quality during this period. So this may not be the case, right? There could be a sudden surge of resources due to, let's say, exports or imports increasing. Okay, 
And one more thing is that the available technology okay, and the level of technology does not change. That is also an assumption. All right, so chances are is that there could be a change in the technology in the long run, right? Especially with improvements, okay, we're always advancing, right? Okay, as well as the quality of workforce, okay, with things such as um, a lot of skills upgrading, okay, programs which are being involved, talent upgrading, right? This may actually cause the level of the workforce to increase. Hence, your PPC um, may not be able to fully rely on these assumptions, okay? They may actually, um, this, these assumptions may cause your PPC to be skewed or biased in a certain sense. Alright, so as I was saying, this is how the PPC looks like. Okay, consumer goods versus capital goods. Okay, this is one example. You can always swap the axis. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, basically there are three um, main points I want you to focus on. Okay, the first point is point number two. Okay, then point three and point four. Okay, point number one is usually um, quite rare. Okay, usually most economies tend to produce on the PPC itself. Okay, so essentially what point two is suggesting okay, is that there will be this point out there which is impossible, okay? You cannot hit because of scarcity, right? Because of scarcity, that point number two, you cannot hit that point um, to actually produce beyond the PPC curve. If you want to do that, yes, you can. You have to shift the entire curve out in order to hit that point, okay? Whatever it is, every economy has to have their economy producing on the PPC curve. So if they want to hit point number two, they will have to increase, let's say, their state of technology to shift the PPC out to actually hit that point number two. Okay, so point three and four is usually what most economies are doing. Okay, but you notice that point three and point four, it shows very drastic opportunity cost differences, right? Because why? When the economy is producing at point number three, what actually happens is that it's producing less capital goods but more consumer goods. So in this case, it is producing more consumer goods than capital goods. So the opportunity cost that it is actually um, incurring is the capital goods that it has to forego. Okay, because of the additional consumer goods that it's producing. Okay, on the other hand, for economy 4, you notice that it's producing more capital goods than consumer goods, right, as it is further out on the axis, correct? Let's say everything is constant and these two axes, they are the exact same values, right? It is producing more capital goods than consumer goods. So the opportunity cost it is incurring would be your consumer goods. So let's say that few consumer goods that it has to forego. Okay, so whatever it is, there can never be a balance, okay? There will always be one that is more than the other, okay, because of this issue of scarcity. Okay, so as I was saying, scarcity is indicated by the unattainable combinations outside of the boundary, so that is point number two. Okay, and then choice is indicated by the need to choose amongst the different alternative, <coughs> excuse me, alternative combinations along the curve, so that is point three and four. Right, so as I was saying, most economies tend to operate on or below the curve, okay, depending on what their priority is in the economy. So let's say if it's a country, um, it's, it's economy of, let's say, uh, India, let's say they want to focus more on consumer goods, things like your Nike shoes, things like Coca-Cola, right, these are consumer goods, they may tend to produce at point number three on the PPC, as compared to, let's say, a country like Singapore. Okay, this economy of Singapore tends to produce more capital goods like microchips. Okay, they tend to produce a lot of intellectual um, properties, right? So this could be, um, point number four could be where the Singapore economy is operating on instead. Right, so the sloping PPC curve shows the increasing opportunity cost which has to be um, brought about as a result of scarcity. Okay, whereby either, either side I move, okay, be it up or down, I will incur a greater opportunity cost in the other good. Alright? So if that part was a bit confusing, okay, go back and replay it. Make sure you really fully understand the PPC. Usually you do not need to draw it, okay, unless the question asks for it. So just understand what it is about. Okay, so economics is all about scarcity. Just take note of this quote that I came up with. Okay, there are trade-offs in every choice made. Okay, trade-offs in every choice made. So what is a trade-off? It could be your opportunity cost. Okay, in every choice made, and every choice made is affected by scarcity. Okay, so you think about any choice that you have to make, okay? If you want to go and use the gym, okay, you may have to forego another alternative of, let's say, um, uh, being able to study, okay? Every, every choice you make is always affected by scarcity in terms of time, in terms of money, in terms of resources available, okay? There will always be 
um, this issue of scarcity that exists. Alright, so if not, that's all I have for this video. Okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it as well as subscribe to the channel. Okay, it does help me out a lot. If you have any questions, do leave it down below. Okay, this whole section, like I said, there are no exam requirements which I've included at the end. Okay, notice that all the rest of my other videos, I'll have an exam requirement slide at the end. Okay, to um, help you understand how to apply the content that you've just learned into your exam. Okay, this one does not have because usually scarcity is more of a general knowledge of something that you need to know that revolves around the whole of economics. You do not necessarily need to answer an essay question based on scarcity. Okay, it'd be quite extreme. Okay, but coming forward, the next few topics, okay, you'll notice that a lot of things talk about opportunity costs, right? And that opportunity cost is actually a very, very strong evaluation that you need to learn um, in order to get to the higher levels of, let's say, your essay or case studies or any type of question that you have to answer. Alright, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Next video will be on rational decision making. Okay, be sure to check it out. It is very important. Um, it is a very, very likely um, huge mark essay question because you can literally talk about anything. So you have to make sure you really understand what it is about. Right? And <coughs> uh, yeah, if not, stay tuned for the, the next few videos to come. I'll see you guys then. Bye.